we all have pathways which are designed for us. And if you resist those pathways, your life is bad. If you go with those pathways, doors start to open up. What the universe has in store for you is not what you think is good for you. And joining us now is Dr. Edward Belbruno from Princeton University. He's also CEO of Innovative Orbital Design and a consultant to NASA. My job was to compute trajectories for the Galileo mission to Jupiter. That sounds very sexy. But that's when I find out just how boring that work was, and it truly was boring. I mean, I was trained as a research mathematician of doing theoretical math, where we throw around very interesting concepts, higher dimensional geometries, and you're always pushing the boundaries of your mind. This job was to compute, once you find one trajectory to Jupiter, which is the exciting part for me, then they want you to compute thousands of them, varying by seconds. And you have to compile the data of the trajectory on spreadsheets. I felt like an accountant. Not to put the work down, I mean, it's very exciting work. The Galileo spacecraft was $4 billion, so if you're gonna spend a $4 billion machine to Jupiter, you better make sure it's designed correctly and you know what you're doing. So all this work is absolutely necessary, and if you're trained as an aerospace engineer, that's what you wanna do. I was trained as a research mathematician. They had a real suspicion of me of being, oh, you're one of those thinker types. I heard that said several times. Five. Lift off. If you send a spaceship to the moon, how can you get it there so that you don't have to fire retro rockets to get it captured to go in orbit around the moon? The way they were doing it up to that point was you send a spaceship to the moon, it's a standard three day route. It goes back to the German Walter Hohmann of the 1920s using calculus that we know today, very simple-minded approach to do this. But it works, so NASA and the Soviets were using it all the time. And the disadvantage of that is that when you get to the moon using the home and route, you're going fast. So you're going about roughly, it's, it's one kilometer a second, which is pretty fast. So if you don't put your brakes on when you reach the moon, you're a spaceship with people in it, you just keep going. and you're dead. So the home and transfer is risky. It's, it's a little bit dangerous and it uses a lot of fuel because you have to slow down and you could burn a hundred pounds of fuel to slow down. I think the Apollo used something like a couple hundred pounds of fuel to slow down. It's a million dollars a pound to bring anything to the moon including fuel. So just to slow down was a quarter of a billion dollars. I'm thinking, well, can you go into orbit without using your engines, then you save all that money. It was a new approach to space travel, but rather being rewarded for that, I could feel that my job was on the line. When I finally walked into my boss's office and he announced to me that I have to let you go. Um, now, they didn't formally fire me. They, I was still there. They just cut my funding off. My world was over. I felt like I have no future. Over. I mean, I felt I, my girlfriend left me. I ran over a dog. When I went to get the, to see how the dog was, it bit me. I broke out in hives. It was like the entire everything was against me. It was I was in a vortex of negativity. What really helped me was I started doing paintings to express myself, and the paintings calmed me down. I said, I know what I'm gonna do. This is one of those aha moments. I said, I like Van Gogh. Why do I like Van Gogh? I like Van Gogh because he did paintings from the heart so fast that they have an element of reality that we don't see because we're thinking. He bypassed the thinking and went right to the paint and the paint shows. You just look at a Van Gogh painting and you know right away they dwarf anything else out there because they're so good. <laughs> so I said, you know, if I do 
I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do a Van Gogh style painting of the Earth Moon system. And if I do it fast enough and with the brush strokes bold enough, maybe in the brush strokes I'll see her out to the moon that does this. So I did that. If it works, that's my ticket. I did a painting of the moon system. There's all the brush strokes all over the place. And lo and behold, I see a pattern of brush marks which start where this little spiral ends. It goes over and does this funny little thing and then goes around the moon. And I can estimate what the velocities are and the location. So I went to the computer, put those in, and what do you think happened? I go to the computer and lo and behold, it exactly did that. I found the first ballistic capture orbit to the moon with a painting. Ed's one of these rare, talented people who can both create uh, interesting art that makes people think, makes people view the universe differently, and make interesting contributions to science. Art is about seeing or hearing the universe in novel ways, and science is about the ways we see the universe. So at a deep level, I think they're very connected. The LA Times did a cover story on this, and I have to say, the real roller coaster hadn't even begun yet. 